All right, as review for the quiz that covers 4.1 to 4.4, we're going to do this question on worksheet 14, okay? We are reviewing. Now, can anybody tell me one of those things? Yes. Okay, this is the midline, right? Which tells us the vertical shift is four. Okay, this is pi, but has it only done one cycle by there? How many times did it repeat? Four times, okay. So if, if over a course of pi, it repeated four times, then the period for one cycle would be pi over four. Does that seem okay, Riley? Excellent. Where'd you get nine? Okay, so max minus min divided by two, or you could just do 13 minus four, right? Because this distance is nine and this distance is nine. Good call. If we're good, it said in the directions we had to use cosine for this, right? Which is nice anyway, but I think it maxes right on the y axis, so we can do none here. Um, can we find b? It doesn't have a blank, I think, for b. b is 2 pi divided by the period of pi over 4, which would be 2 pi times 4 over pi. Sometimes 4 times 2 is 8. <laughs> I just spit on my computer. <laughs> Six, eight, that's the way I multiply. <laughs> Two times four is eight. Okay, <laughs> let's fill it in. Y equals nine, the amplitude, times cosine B, which was eight, X. Okay. We all right? We have a lot more practice when we do the modeling today. Um, there was a question on, oh, this number eight? Okay. Well, this is good practice for the quiz because it's, it, yeah, well, a little bit disgusting, but it's, it's a graphing question, okay? It's not writing a graph, but what can you tell me? Let's write some notes over here. Okay. The vertical shift is up to, so the midline is at, y equals 2. Which way do you want me to do it? Since this doesn't have any, do you want me to just call this y equals 2? Does yours have marks on it or no? Okay, so we can call this y equals 2 right here. How far above and below are we going? So the top would be 5 units above. That would be all our maxes will be at 7 and our mins will be at... 2 minus 5 would be negative 3 will be our mins down here. Okay. What's the B? B is pi over 2. What does that make the period, though? 2 pi divided by pi over 2, or 2 pi times 2 over pi. Ah, when there's a pi in the equation, do we need a pi's on our graph? No. So this is going to have a period of 4, but before we start drawing it, we need to do what? Left 3. So if this is 3, I'm just making something up here, when is it going to finish? 4 units later? Everybody okay? The period is left 3. Just kidding. So if this is negative 3, Four units later would be one, and four units after that, if you wanted to do another cycle, would be five, okay? Just kidding. All right, <clears throat> where do we start, though? Yeah, at the midline, right? Okay, so it finishes at one and five, okay. Ordered pairs. What's this one right here? The very first one I drew here. Be careful. Nope. Okay. 
<laughs> oh, that was the whole period was at one. Yeah. Good thing someone's awake. The period is four. The period is four. Are we good? So negative three to one is an entire cycle of length four. Then if we, I put that there so we could do another period if we wanted. <gasps> Thank you. Okay. You still got this one wrong, though. What is this ordered pair, guys? Two. Yep, be careful. When we do that rename thing, too often we call it zero. All right, let's... This one where it ends is one, two. Yes. Yep, you can absolutely. You can write them on the graph or you can put them off to the side. I don't care. All right. What's halfway between negative 3 and positive 1? Negative 1. So that's negative 1, 2, right? Okay. Oh, this isn't too bad. What falls between negative 3 and negative 1? So it's negative 2, 7. And the min? Yeah. Big dot. 0, negative 3. <laughs> Clearly that's 0. Do you, do you need me to do more? I just need five ordered pairs, right? doesn't say you have to do two periods or anything. All right. Can I go to the green sheet now? Is this the green sheet? Nope, this is not the green sheet, which means I need to move this little box out of the way. Uh. All right, there's the green sheet. Do you know how to find where the quadrant is? You could change it to degrees because most of us think in degrees and then just draw it and figure out which quadrant you stopped in, right? Everybody okay with this? This is the green sheet that you were supposed to pick up at the door? Okay. Find the reference angle. We struggled with this. What do you want to do? Oh, yeah. Sorry. There's some here. My bad. I grabbed some earlier today. Yeah, I. we can change it to degrees. 25 times 180 divided by 9 is 500. If I try to draw 500 degrees, what am I going to do? 360 plus another 140. What quadrant is that in? Quadrant 2, okay, but that isn't what the question asks, unfortunately. They want to know the reference angle, which is the angle it makes with the x-axis. Would just be 40, everybody okay? 180 minus 140, this would be a 40-degree angle in here. The answer, reference angles, guys, are always positive, by the way. Yep, we got to change it back to radians. So we got to do times pi over 180, which is... Two ninths. We need one more example of that. Can I do one in degrees? Just what if it said negative uh, 428 degrees? How would you find the reference angle? Plus 360 would make it what? Negative 68. Okay. Negative 68 is right there. What's the reference angle? Just 68 because it's back to the x-axis. It's just an angle of 68 degrees. Another one? No? This was a second example. I just made up an example. Yep, sorry about that. The answer to number 2 was 2 pi over 9, yes. Did we do one yesterday like that on the worksheet 27? I feel like we did. Okay. If you need more examples, let me know. Number three, 
We did degrees, radians, radians to degrees. Uh, no. Degrees, minutes, and seconds to decimals and decimals to degrees, minutes, and seconds yesterday. It's the angle menu on your calculator you need, which is second and then the apps button. Is that enough to help you do those? You type this in. And then you go to this second apps, and there's a button, I think it's choice four, that says into degrees, minutes, and seconds, just like that. This one, you have to type all this crazy business in with the symbols, and then just hit enter, and it gives you the decimal. The, the which one? It's um, second, no, alpha plus. Alpha plus is where you find the little seconds. That's not under the angle menu, okay? Otherwise, we're good? All right, I'm really concerned about these questions. Okay, they're not that hard once we get the hang of it. What you have to do is figure out where you are on the unit circle and find the ordered pair. Once you have the ordered pair, it's easy, okay? So negative 900 degrees to figure out where I am on the unit circle. If I add a couple 360s, what do I get? Okay, can we find that? We could add another 360 and it'd be positive 180. Either way, the ordered pair is what? The ordered pair is negative one zero. Everybody okay? Did you see her? You with us? Got your unit circle out? Okay, so we found negative 900 was located at this ordered pair. We rotate around a bunch of times and we landed there. How do we find the cotangent once we know the ordered pair? It's the first number is cosine, the second number is sine, and cotangent is cosine over sine, right? Or x over y. So we get negative 1 over 0, which is... Undefined. And if you leave negative 1 over 0, I'm missing kind of wrong. You have to know that it's undefined, okay? Negative 10 pi over 3. You want to do degrees? Otherwise, you could count pi over 3s. If we change it to degrees, it's negative 600, right? Did I do that right? If we add a couple 360s, maybe, we get 120. That's coterminal. That's all that matters is that that's where it's located is here. So the ordered pair is negative 1 half squared of 3 over 2. Okay. All we need is the cosine. That's the x value. So the answer is negative 1 half. Can I? Help you with one, guys. You okay? Which one do you want me to go back to? Hmm? No? Okay. If you're doing something else, that's fine. I just was didn't want to skip you if you had a question. Negative pi over four. Honestly, I just look and go, oh, well, pi over four is that way. So negative pi over four is the exact same amount that way, right? So the ordered pair is here. So my ordered pair is this. Okay, secant is the flip of cosine, and cosine is the x, right? So I got to flip that over. What does that become? Which is not going to give you the right answer. We need to simplify completely. It's just root two. I mean, the right answer is just not simplified, I should say. I don't know. All right, a couple more. Cosecant of 210. This one's nice because we don't have to add or subtract anything. We just find 210. What's the ordered pair? Negative root 3 over 2, negative 1 half. And cosecant, it flips sine over. The sine is 1 half, so we do the reciprocal and we get negative 2. 9 pi over 2. It's 810 degrees, am I right? 
Okay, so if we subtract uh, a couple 360s, we get what? Oh, we get 90? Yep, absolutely, that's what I would have done. There's nine of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We'd wind up here. So the ordered pair is 0, 1. Cotangent is... It's cosine over sine or 0 over 1, which is... And again, if you leave 0 over 1, I'm going to count it wrong. you got to tell me that it means 0. Cotangent of 120, yay, another one that's right on the unit circle. 120, our ordered pair is <clears throat> negative 1 half squared of 3 over 2. Do you remember I talked about this? Cotangent is cosine over sine. So you could do this divided by this, and you could do a whole bunch of flipping over and reducing, and then rationalizing. But you remember what always happens when we do tangent or cotangent? The twos always cancel out. Okay? So you could have just said cosine over sine is negative 1 over square root of 3 by ignoring the twos. All right? And then that rationalizes how, guys? Negative. Be careful. All right. I have a few more practice on this or not? We're okay? All right. That brings us to 11, I think. Yes? Do we need to do 11 or 12? You want to do the phase shift? The ordered pairs for 11 are written at the bottom of the worksheet, guys. I gave you the answers down there, so you can try graph in 11, do the order pairs. I, phase shift students struggle with. Let me tell you what I would suggest. You can use as much scratch paper as you want for this question, okay, on a test. I would suggest you just drew the sine graph with an amplitude of 4. Where would it normally finish? 2 pi, pi, pi over 2. 3 pi over 2, yes? If we are literally going to shift this whole thing, what? Left pi over 3. Every one of those ordered pairs, you're going to subtract pi over 3. Okay? So it's going to start over here at left pi over 3 and finish somewhere over here, and it's going to go 4 to negative 4. The first ordered pair, we just shifted 0 to the left, so it became what? Negative pi over 3, 0. Then this pi over 2, how do we move it to the left? Subtract pi over 3. Do 1 half minus 1 third. Ignore the pi. Do one half minus one third math, enter, enter, and you get what? Negative one sixth. Is that what you got on the calculator? It is positive one sixth. I'm lying. It's clearly positive one sixth. <laughs> okay, so my graph is really good. It's over here. So it's positive pi over 6, 4. Then it used to be at pi, 0. But this is going to be, now we got to subtract a pi over 3. What's 1 pi minus 1 third pi? Do 1 minus 1 third on your calculator if you need to and you get 2 thirds, 0. Okay, the minimum used to be at 3 halves, but now we're shifting it. Sorry. So do 3 divided by 2 minus 1 divided by 3. Seven, six. Comma what? Negative 4. Which, yeah, my scale's off a bit on my graph here. We'll say negative 2, negative 4. So, uh, 
Yeah. Just don't. What's wrong? This this one was pi over 6, 4. Okay. Then we used to finish at 2 pi, but we got to subtract to pi over 3. 2 minus 1 third is 5 thirds. Zero. Did you see how that made it nice and crooked? <laughs> so that it went through that spot. <laughs> okay. Did that help some of you figure out how to do the points? I don't know. There's so many different ways you can do them. But don't be afraid to draw one and before you shift it. You can use scratch paper. There's plenty of room on there. Just scribble it in, whatever you need to do, okay? All right, what about these questions? We talked about this, writing equations. Um, there's a multiple choice matching. So you just have to like figure out what the amplitude and period and figure out which choice it is. Yes, you get to use the blue sheet. Read through these quick, 15, 16, 17, 18. You have 15 seconds. Anybody have a question on any of them? Okay, maybe I'll give you 30 yeah. seconds. Sixteen. Linear velocity is angular velocity times radius. So what do we have to do for sixteen? Is revolutions per minute, is that an angular velocity? One revolution is two pi. It's got to be in radians to be an angular velocity. Then we multiply by the radius of 10 inches. Radians magically disappear, and we have inches per minute. Oh, they want feet per minute. Yeah. So now we need to multiply by what? One foot is 12 inches. We actually have to divide by 12. So it's 4,700 times 2 times pi times 10 divided by 12. Need me to rewrite that? Is it, the answer is at the bottom. Did you type the pi in and I didn't, or are we okay? Yeah. Did I type the pi in or not? Or did I give you both answers? 4,700 times 2 pi times 10 divided by 12, so 24,609 roughly. Okay. Anything else? 15, 16, 17, 18. 18 is an arc length question. How far have you traveled around the outside? So it's S equals R times theta. Is this already in radians? So there's theta. And R, 25 feet. So you just do 25 times 80 pi over 5, okay? 19. What quadrant is 6, negative 7 in? Fourth, I went right, six, and down seven, right? So you're just drawing it, and then it wants the sine. So I have to do Pythagorean theorem. Can you just take my word for it? It's square root of 85. Because negative seven squared is 49, right? Because you have to put in parentheses if you use your calculator. 49 and 36 is 85. So how do you find the sine of that angle? Opposite over hypotenuse, which is negative 7 square root of 85 over 85. It does not simplify because 85 is 17 times 5. It's a lovely answer. Anything else? Okay. We need to quickly flip over to worksheet 
Mm, 15. Thank you. All right. I am not admitting this on camera or anything, but this lesson was once part of an evaluation. That's why it looks so pretty and has all the things like, what are the common core standards that we're actually covering today? Okay. Not admitting anything. I always tell you what common core standards we're addressing, right? All right. As we're trying to get a lot done today, we're going to start with uh, right into the question here, number one. Rashad's riding a Ferris wheel. His distance from the ground varies sinusoidally with time. When the last seat is filled and the Ferris wheel starts, Rashad is at some random spot right here. But T is the number of seconds. That's going to be this axis. Um, have a lap since it started. Rashad determines that it takes him three seconds in. And where is he? At three seconds, he's at the top of the Ferris wheel, which is 43 above, 43 feet above the ground. So he's at this point, 343. And this is 43, and this is his height in feet. Okay. He also determines that he's back in his original position after eight seconds. So one revolution takes eight seconds. Does that mean the period is eight seconds? Yes. Does that mean the ordered pair is at eight seconds? One revolution takes eight seconds, yes? So when is the next time he's up here? No. Eight seconds. So he goes down and back up, and it's eight seconds later. So this is 11.43. The period is eight seconds. Does that help? The length of a cycle is eight seconds. All right, the diameter of the wheel is 40. Why do we need to know that? Look over here, guys. His height at the top was 43 feet. The diameter is 40, so the lowest he was is three feet, thankfully. Right? He didn't have to hit his feet on the ground as it went around. There's a little clearance there. Three feet. So the mins are at three feet. So we could find that order pair if we cared. We need to come up with an equation. What do you know? The period is eight seconds. So the B value is what? 2 pi over 8, which would be pi over 4. We're going to do this as a cosine or a sine. So we're going to have cosine of pi over 4. We know the phase shift is what? If we're going to do it as a cosine, we're going to do to the right 3. Everybody okay? So when we put that phase shift in, we're going to write x. Minus 3. There we go. Okay, the amplitude is 20. How did you get that? Okay, this is a total distance of 40, so it's 20 above and below the fa the vertical shift. So the amplitude is 20. Everybody okay? 20 plus 3 would make this vertical shift right here be how long? The midline is at y equals... 23. That was a lot of stuff. Eight seconds all the way around. Yeah, that's a little fast. Okay. <laughs> all right, guys. You need to graph this in your calculator. Okay. Turn your calculator on. Make sure it's in radians or this won't work. Go to y equals, type 20, okay. 
20 cosine button, pi divided by 4, because it brought up a parenthesis. Then you write parenthesis, x minus 3, close both of those parentheses, plus 23, just like we wrote it here. Yeah, now, I need a window, guys. Quick, help me. How far across did we look? 0 to 12? What happened here? I want to probably type. My X window, 0 to 12. And my Y window, 0 to 45. That sounds great, Basma. Okay. We're going to go window, 0 to 12, 0 to 45. Okay, how are we going to know if we did this right? Um, you could look at the table of values, okay, if it's set to auto auto. Could you also just trace? If I go trace 3, am I at 43? Yes, I am. If I go trace 11, I'm at 43. What's halfway between 8 and 11? 7. If I go trace 7, I'm at 3 feet. That seems good, right? Okay. The questions down here say predict your height at 6, 4 and a third, 9, and 0. What are we going to do there? You can trace all of those because they're all in our window. Or you could go to the table, right? Especially if you have the table set to, oh, I'm having trouble here. Ask auto. Then you could go, I need the height at six. Enter four and one third. You can actually type here four plus one divided by three. Uh, what were the other two? Nine and zero. So I got 8.9, 33, 23, and 8.9. Is anybody having trouble? I can come help somebody with their calculator. Did you guys get it? Uh, under table setup, second window maybe? 8.9, was it 33, 23? And 8.9 again, right? So if we backed this up, he was down here at 8.9, but we don't care. Is that the only questions it asked about that one? Okay, got eight minutes. I'm going to try to set up the other three. We may not have time to type them in the calculator, but at least we can get a, the equations written, okay? Now, in case you had trouble understanding how a Ferris wheel works, I have a little picture here. The height as you go around goes down and then back up, right? That's why it's... Okay. This question, physics question. As it bounces, it varies sinusoidally with time. You start a stopwatch. When it says 0.3, it hits a high of 60 centimeters. So 0.3. The high is 60 centimeters. Point three sixty. Okay. Now, it reaches a low point at 1.8 seconds. The next time it hits a low, it says, is at 1.8. And that low is 40. Is that a whole period? It's only half a period, right? Because it says to the low. Could we keep going? Yeah, there's not any room though, right? But how long did that take? From 0.3 to 1.8 was... The 20 is the difference in height. The time is 1.5 seconds. So if that was only half the period, what's the whole period? It says you will not show a whole period. So it's 1.5 seconds was half the period. So the period is 3 seconds. All right, amplitude? Well, what's halfway in here? 
50 is halfway. Is that the amplitude? That's the vertical shift, okay. What's the amplitude then? From the midline up and the midline down is the amplitude, which is, I don't either. Okay, cosine graph. So start filling in my equation for me. 10 cosine. Now we need to do a little work. The period was three, so this is just two pi over three. Point three to the right, double parenthesis, plus 50. Okay, can I go on? Cause you guys could type that in and check those values. You get that part? Okay. Let's try the tidal wave. Okay. Yeah, it's a very weird graph. Okay, or picture there. Uh, a tsunami is a fast moving ocean wave caused by an underground earthquake. The water first goes down and then up. Okay. So suppose the water it has a period, the one we're talking about here is a period of 15 minutes. So we know that already, the period is 15 minutes. And this tsunami has an amplitude of 10 meters. And the normal depth of water at this pier is nine feet. So when we stand out at the end of the pier, if we were to dive in, it would be nine feet. Okay. What does it say it does first? goes down. How far does it go down? Doesn't the amplitude mean how far it goes down if this is the normal? Okay, how do you have a depth of negative one? Well, or it just like receded back, right? So you would see the sand or whatever. It's like even further back than low tide, okay? It's back. If you're ever sitting on the beach and all of a sudden you see the way the water start to pull back away from where you're at, run. Because the next thing it's going to do, it's going to go way up and have a tidal wave. Okay. Finish this. Okay. How far up does it go? It goes another 10 feet up, so this would be 19 up and negative one down. Those are the y values. Okay, what's the period again? 15 minutes. This is where it ends at 15, nine. Now, we don't really need to know all this other stuff in between to finish these order pairs, so can we just try to figure out what we do need to know? Do we need a phase shift? What are we going to call it if we don't want to use a phase shift? Almost an upside down sign, right? This shape is an upside down sign. Okay, so we're going to have negative amplitude of 10. Sign, you told me I don't need a phase shift. Oh, I need a B value though. The period was 15. So B is the normal period over that, 2 pi over 15. X, is there a vertical shift? Nine, good call. Okay, skip part E about the wavelength. Okay. All right, I got a minute and a half. We're going to talk about the last one. I just want to get it drawn for you. A satellite, guys, distance from the equator is approximately sinusoidal with time. It's fired from Cape Canaveral 10 minutes after it leaves. It is 4,000 kilometers north of the equator. Then it goes above and below the Earth, uh, the equator. Okay. The furthest south it reaches 
is 4,000 south of the equator. So negative numbers in this case mean south of the equator, okay? Orbit, orbit in 90 minutes. So if we needed an ordered pair, this would actually be minute 100. But what is that 90 telling us? So the period is 90. So when we go to put that in, B would be 2 pi over 90 or pi over 45. I don't care which one you write. Can you get the equation written? Amplitude? 4,000. Cosine? Pi over 45 or 2 pi over 90. I don't care which. X minus 10 to the right. Does it need a vertical shift? No. These are so good. All right. Where did my little box go to turn this thing off? Wow. Oh, there it is.